of us who've been around a long time know Alexa and her work at Carolina Pregnancy Center. And my friend Gay Holt um, told me about three weeks ago, <laughs> we have Alexa come and speak at our meeting. So I went home and I got on my Facebook, Alexa, Alexa, will you come speak at our meeting? I'd love to come speak at your meeting. So Gay got her first, but we got her. So anyway, she, um, she just knows so much about um, just all the pro-life issues. She runs a wonderful center, and I hope you tell us about it and how we can support you. And she runs, I mean, the <coughs> banquet of the year in Spartanburg every year. I try to go, and, and I just encourage all of you to go. First of all, a fabulous speaker. Second of all, you could not spend your charitable donations in a better place. So, Alexa, you come and you tell us everything and anything you want to know. Questions that that you want to ask me, um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what we do, and um, I've been there for almost 26 years. Um, and I laugh and tell people they hired me when I was 15, but I can't get by with that anymore. Um, no, nobody believes it anymore. But um, when I went to CPC, they had been in operation for two and a half years and in that two and a half year period um, the, the first year they saw 56 women and the next year they saw 139 women and they had five different directors in that period of time um, they all got pregnant but they were married it was no problem but I say the reason they hired me was because I was single and working for a pregnancy center a ministry I better not get pregnant <laughs> so um, but before that, I had been in youth ministry and loved that, uh, but I knew that I loved working with students, and I felt like that if I uh, went to Carolina Pregnancy Center, I'd still get to do that. Um, I'm from Spartanburg. I had um, I worked in Abbeville for five years, and then I came back to Spartanburg to, um, to be a part of Carolina Pregnancy Center. Um, and when I went there, all we were doing was uh, doing free pregnancy tests and giving out a few baby clothes. And we were in 900 square feet of, um, of office space. And um, so I came in April of 1989, and at the end of that year, we had seen 838 women. So that was quite a jump from 139 to 838. I went to our board and I said, we cannot stay in 900 square feet, we are busting at the seams. And they said, we just moved in here like a month before you came. I said, I know. But um, what I did was started going to the schools and meeting with guidance counselors and principals and said, if you have students that either think they're pregnant or they already are, we would love that opportunity to minister to them and to help them through a very difficult time. And um, that worked. We, I got a man in my church. We didn't have any money. Our budget was $36,000. That was our rent, my salary, all of our supplies, because everything we do is free and confidential. So I went to a man in my church, and I said, somehow I've got to get the word out that we exist. And um, I said, if I buy some pencils that say free pregnancy test and our telephone number, would you pay for them? He said, I will. So um, I bought 500 pencils, and he paid for them. And I tied, I'd get put 10 in a bundle, and I'd tie a red bow around them, and I would make either some banana bread or a coffee cake, and out I went visiting uh, schools and uh, visiting guidance counselors, as I said. So they were giving out these pencils to students. Um, I want to tell you right up front, we're pro-life ministry. We do not refer for abortions um, at all. Um, we're a ministry, so we are um, evangelical. Um, and we, we're not supported by any one denomination or anything. But mainly, our thing is we want to help girls through a very difficult time. And so, um, as I said, we were in that small amount of space, and we began to pray that God would open up larger office space for us in the Metro Center because that's where we are, right off California Avenue. I called our landlord and I said, if anything larger comes available um, in the Metro Center, we would love an option at that. And right across the street, three months later, the fast fare lost their police. And she called and said, would y'all like that? That was 2,500 square feet. And we were like, 
yes. I didn't call the board and ask them. I just said yes. <laughs> and um, then I called the board and said, guess what? I've just obligated us to. So we had this new office space. We uh, gutted it and renovated it for about $2,000. Uh, Carpenters for Christ came in. Church groups came in. We got the um, carpet at cost. Somebody gave us wallpaper. And we had a little bit of furniture, and we were on our way. Um, hey, um, we didn't want to go in debt at all, and we didn't, and we still have no debt. Um, we are cash. Um, we pay all of our bills are current. Um, that's just that's just the way you do things. And so, as I said, we have no debt, and we actually have a little bit of savings. And normally, nonprofits can't say that, but we were blessed with a gift um, several years ago. And um, we decided to put that money away. And when we got it, interest rates were really nice. <laughs> and um, we got, we're getting good interest on that, but we've not had to touch that. And it's not, it's not a trem tremendous amount of money. But we knew that eventually we would like to own our own office and not have to pay rent. I hate paying rent. And so we've been trying to sock away money as we can and... Um, so we can be good stewards of what we have. Um, as the ministry grew, um, and we were in that bigger office space, um, we began to loan out maternity clothes for girls that needed them. We had cribs and car seats, and we had all kind of stuff. Um, that bothered me, that girls were just coming in and getting stuff with no responsibility. And they were telling their friends, if, if, if one girl came in and got diapers on Tuesday, <coughs> Three of her friends would be there on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And being a good conservative, fiscal conservative, that's stuck in my crawl. And so we have a program now called Earn While You Learn. Um, and now we have the whole strip. We're in a, a little strip mall, and now we're in about 8,700 square feet. And we just got it piece by piece. And we've added an ultrasound <laughs> machine. We can do free ultrasounds. Um, we do um, counseling for men and women that have had abortions and are struggling with that. Um, we, there's, we loan out clothes. But there were all these girls that were coming and our numbers were just climbing. And they're just coming in and getting things that nice folks like y'all were getting to us. And so I was in a car accident and was in a wheelchair for about a year and had, uh, didn't work for about two months, couldn't. But I could get on the internet. And I was looking for a program that we could do that would help these girls be responsible. And so we initiated a program called Earn While You Learn, where the girls are connected with a mentor that they meet with twice a month. And they come into the office. We have a library. They check out books. Um, they do book reports on those, and their mentor goes over that. Um, we have classes that they can take, and we pay them mommy money. It's not real money, but it's money that they can spend in our store. And in our store, we have cribs, we have car seats, we have formula, we have diapers. We have some girls that come in every week and buy their diapers and their formula and their wipes because they've worked hard. If they have a job, we'll give them $15 for every pay stub that they bring in. Uh, if they take their child to well baby checkups, we will pay them for that. Um, if, they, if they volunteer at another organization or a, a ministry or whatever, we will pay them mommy money. Um, and so we had a girl just a couple of weeks ago and she bought a brand new crib, a car seat, a high chair, and she's working now for a stroller. Um, and those are her things to keep. She has worked for them, she's earned them, but at the same time, she has learned a lot of skills. We bring in um, a gentleman that teaches finances, and it's a six-week course, and we pay them every week they come to class. Um, we give them um, Larry Burkett's set of tapes. At the end, they've got, they go through those, but, um, and we do some Dave Ramsey, but they have that set when they're done. Um, we talk to them about marriage if they're not married. We talk to them about marriage. Some of them aren't dating. Um, but we want them to be prepared for that. Our job is to get them, if they're going to be parents, then we want them to be the best parents that we can be. We have classes on discipline. 
um, just a variety of classes that people from the community come in and teach. Um, we did a survey about a month ago and we asked them what kind of classes they were looking for. And um, the number one class that they wanted was cake decorating. I was sharing this last <laughs> night. They wanted us to provide a cake decorating class for them. And I just thought that was strange that of all the things they could take, and they had a good list, I mean, if we're going to do other classes, but the number one was cake decorating. And I asked one of our clients, I said, uh, cake decorating was your number one. Why, why is that? Why would you want to take a cake decorating class? And she said, because growing up, I never had a birthday cake. She said, my mom never had the money to get me a birthday cake. And she said, if I, I want my child to have a birthday cake. And you've taught me that I don't have to buy every day, that I can be responsible and make things myself. And she said, so I want, that's why I want to learn to decorate a cake. And she said, then maybe I could even start a little business on the side, making cakes for my friends. And I was like, yes, she's getting it. <laughs> this is good. Um, we want them to finish school. We um, have done GED classes. We have um, helped them stay in school. Uh, many times I've gone to them to school to tell their guidance counselors that they're pregnant and they're gonna may have to go on homebound at, at some point, but we really want them to stay in school. We've had girls that have gone on to Spartanburg Community College, to Spartanburg Methodist College, even some to Converse, uh, and of course at USC Upstate, and they're really, we ask them, what are your goals and how can we help you achieve those goals? So we are much more than a Save a Baby organization. Our budget now is uh, around $475,000. Uh, it's my job to raise that money. Um, and that God brings it in. I mean, I just I just tell you that. God brings it in. And we've never, ever n not been able to pay our bills. And I, for nonprofits, that's hard to say sometimes. But we are very blessed to have good church support in the community and then groups like <coughs> yours. And you might ask, well, how did you stop the store? with all those things that you say you have available. Well, it's because individuals, groups, churches do baby showers for us and bring in things that we need. Just right before we left today, a lady came in and said, can somebody help me bring diapers in? My little Sunday school class has bought, di bought diapers. And she was in a little Kia SUV, and the whole back of her Kia was full of diapers that children had bought. And that just keeps us from having to buy those things. And, or they'll give us gift cards. We love to get gift cards. And um, so we watch the sales if we know that we've got a girl that's due and she needs a car seat and that's what she's working toward. Then we watch the sales at Walmart and Target and we buy when it's on sale. We want to be good stewards of the money that we have. There's so, I can tell you story after story after story um, of things that go on there. And it is not about me. I mean, I've been there for a long time, but um, I could walk away at any time because it's not my ministry. It's God's ministry. And he's put a team of people in place that I work with every day that are fabulous. I wish you could meet them. I wish they were with me tonight um, because they're all committed to what we do. I have a great board that keeps me accountable. Um, our books, our finances are available for anybody to look at at any time um, because we we really pray specifically that God will give us a good reputation in this community and uh, so I want you to know that when you give to us when you think about us I want you to know that we we really do strive to be good stewards of our money and that we want we don't want these girls to be on welfare and they know that they know that I mean some of them have to have help, um, but our goal is to get them off of that merry-go-round because for so many of them, that's all they've ever seen. That's what mama did, that's what grandmama did, and um, that's the whole point of Earn While You Learn, that you can earn those things that you need. And they're, they're, so many of them are learning pride for the first time, and pride in themselves. Um, because we do talk to them about a lifestyle change, because obviously, um, if they're there, <laughs> there's been a problem. But now we're even seeing more married clients because their husband doesn't have a job, he's been laid off. And so we're trying to help them just 
stay off that welfare cycle. And so they're doing earn while you learn, and they can get their diapers and their, their cribs and those kind of things, and don't have to depend on somebody else. So that is just a little bit about what we do. Um, like I said, there's so many stories. We have a girl right now that is at, is at a high school here, and she's working two jobs. She's a straight-A student. She's a terrific mom. She's just a terrific mom. Her little girl is just growing up and um, just doing so well. But she's getting ready to graduate. She's already been offered a full scholarship to go to college. Um, she's very fortunate that her parents are very supportive of her. Um, but they all don't turn out that well, but a lot of them do. And also, we present adoption. Um, and we, of all, there's 28 crisis pregnancy centers in the state, and we're very proud that ours has the highest percentage of girls that release for adoption, um, because that is a wonderful choice for a girl that just doesn't feel like she's ready to be a mom. Doesn't mean she doesn't love that child at all, but she is sacrificed so that child can have the things that she doesn't have. And I remember one girl that I saw, um, and we, she, she tried to parent for six weeks. She tried her best to parent that child, and it just wasn't working out. And she came to my office one Friday afternoon with that baby, and she said, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I love him too much. Can you find a family for him? And she turned around and started walking out the door. I'm like, whoa, wait, whoa, wait. You, we can't do it like that. Um, but I did end up keeping that baby for the weekend, and um, we found a family. And I, I asked her, I said, Julie, what, what is it that you're looking for in a family? She wanted a family. She was an only child. And she wanted a family that already had other children because she didn't want her child to grow up as an only child. Um, and she said, and I'd really like for them to have a horse because when I was little, I always wanted a horse. It's okay. And she said, and I always wanted a red car. <laughs> so if we can find a family that already has children and a horse and a red car, that's really like that's really who I would like for my daughter. So we searched and searched. I worked with Jim, work with Jim Thompson, who's an adoption attorney in town. I said, okay, Jim, this is what we've got. Family that's got a red car, a horse, and other children, and we found that family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so. This, it was just a sweet, sweet story. She lives in Virginia now. She's married. She has four other children, and it's just doing great. And her son um, is 12 years old now, and um, he's doing very well. But um, we had another story where um, a girl came and brought us her baby and said, I can't, can't do this. We got a call from the hospital to come, and uh, we, we went, and um, it was right before Mother's Day. And we found a family through Jim, and I, t I told Jim, I said, Jim, how fun would it be if we could take this baby to their house on Mother's Day and not tell the mom? He said, Lex, I don't think we can do this. I said, yes, we can get in touch with the dad, and we, yes, I think we can. Do, I think we can make it happen. And so that's exactly. I showed up on their doorstep at 8:30 on Mother's Day morning with this beautiful baby in a blue blanket and family was down the street in cars packed with stuff because the dad had told the grandparents you're going to be grandparents on Mother's Day but mom had no clue so we show up I ring the doorbell I've got this baby who's just precious and um, with attorney there with me and the dad comes to the door and of course he knew we were coming he was like Honey, there's somebody at the door. She said, I'm trying to get ready for church. And he's like, no, I think you might want to come to the door. And so I got to place that baby in her arms and say, Happy Mother's Day. And oh, my goodness, we were all a puddle. And then all of a sudden, these cars just come screeching out. They're getting out with all the stuff. So those are the kind of things that we do. Um, Karen mentioned our banquet. And that banquet is April the 23rd. We've had some great speakers in the past last year. Um, we had Jay Sekula, who was amazing. He was so good. Um, we've had, um, you know, she, I worked with Rick Santorum when he ran before. Um, he came and spoke with us when he was not running for office, but he came. Um, we've had Sean Hannity from Fox News. Um, 
Yeah, yeah we had Tim Tebow's mom, uh, Pam Tebow. Um, we've had some just wonderful speakers. And you would probably recognize both of, most of their names. Our speaker this year, you're not going to know him from Adam's house, Pat. His name is Brian Ivey. And if you have heard anything about the movie The Dropbox that was in theaters uh, last week, uh, Brian Ivey is a 23-year-old young man. He makes films. He lives in Los Angeles, California. And he wanted to win a film competition. He heard about Pastor Lee over in South Korea. South Korea has a tremendously high rate of children that are abandoned. And so he found out about Pastor Lee who in his house in South Korea, he has cut a hole in the side of his house and made a box in that. And people that don't want to keep their children can put those babies in that box. And he takes them and um, some of them are released for adoption right now. He has 15 children in his home, and most of them are severely handicapped. Um, Brian Ivey went to South Korea to do a documentary. He called Pastor Lee, somehow got his number, and through an interpreter said, I'd like to come and do a documentary about um, what you do. And Pastor Lee said, I don't know what a documentary is, but you can come stay at my house. Yeah. And so he went with a film crew and stayed there for three weeks and made this documentary. Um, through that whole process, um, became a Christian. Um, he said, I thought I was a Christian. I didn't smoke cigarettes, and I um, watched watch Fox News. And so um, he said, but I found out that I wasn't. Well, he is just a delightful young man. I have not met him, of course, but I've talked with him on the phone a lot. And uh, I'm really excited for him to come. We, we normally have between 125 and 150 tables at our banquet that seat 10 people. Uh, I think last year we had around 120. Um, but I'm selling. I mean, I'm on the phone every day selling tables. And uh, this year I've only made two telephone calls and we've already sold 88 tables. And I'll, I'll, I'll be selling the rest of the month now. But I think it's going to be a huge, huge time together and so I'm excited about it. It's, it's just fun. I mean we always try to do something that we're, when you leave you're glad that you went. The food's good. Um, we try to put on a program that you would enjoy and um, so I, I'm excited about it this year. As Karen said, well I tell you, I'll stop if you have any, but I do want to tell you about the legislation that we're working on, but if you have any questions about CPC I will be glad to answer them as best that I can. I have a quick one. Yes, ma'am. You had said that you went into the schools with the pencils, and maybe I missed it, but um, I know you're teaching skills, you know, after their pregnancy, but is there anything about abstinence? That's what we have tried to do. I went, I went to the guidance counselors just to let them know that we existed <laughs> and that if they had um, students that they thought might be pregnant or boyfriends of girls, that they would just let them know that we existed. Um, we do. I have been invited into the school, excuse me into the schools to teach abstinence. Um, the laws have kind of changed, and um, um, I'm not invited as much as I used to be. And I understand that the law says I can't talk about abortion. I can't talk about, and I don't. Um, I just think that's an integrity factor. Um, but I do think that I was. I know I was at Harper Junior High one day. And I had done my abstinence thing, and I thought the students were with me. And um, at the end of the program, the teacher got up and said, Now, students, Miss Newman is not saying that you should not have sex before you get married. Miss Newman's saying that you need to be prepared. You need to have your condoms, guys. And, and she's saying, and some boy in the back of the room raised his hand and said, That's not what she said at all. <laughs> that is not what she said. She told us that if we were having sex and we weren't married, that was wrong, and we were going to end up with a baby or a disease, that you weren't listening. Um, so, needless to say, I wasn't invited back. Um, but I do love to go into schools, and I go into a lot of churches and speak. Um, but we don't... Um, You're just after the fact. Yes, we would like to be before the fact. And um, 
we work to, we're working toward that. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> I take it that you somehow are able to keep the Department of Social Services out of this? Because we don't take any government funds at all. That's the trick. We take yeah, no... That is absolutely not. We take no, we don't want them. <laughs> we don't want them. Too many strings. And yeah. There's too many strings, and um, it's just that's just not the way we operate. And they, there would be so many stipulations that, um, not that they would be bad, but we like saying what we, what we want to say. And um, I know I had a lady call me one day, and her daughter had not worked very hard and earned while you learn. And she said, well, I will get all of your government money if you don't give my daughter that car seat. And I said, well, ma'am, just try as hard as you may. We don't get any government money. <laughs> and, um, you know, she, all these threats. And I said, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but she's not getting that car seat until she earns the money. And I said, all she's got to do is come in and read a couple books or even watch a video or take a couple of classes and she can earn the rest of that $25 that she needs, but she's not getting it until she comes in with that. And oh, she came and and I said, I'm sorry, but that's, and that's the problem, is that with so many of these teenagers that their parents, as my daddy would say, scotch them up and go in threatening. And um, I may be short, but I'm not scared. And um, we have rules. And we, we have, you know, we have a policy, and that's what we do. Now, we get, do we get calls from the hospital saying we've got a girl here and she has nothing? And are we going to go reach out to her? Yes. Are we going to help provide for her? Yes. But we take just enough to get her by and say, if you will come and enroll in our program, then you can get more. Um, but we have a lot of grace, but, um, you know, we don't take government money, and so. How do people who would like to have benefits uh, get on your list? Or, I mean, well, we don't actually, we don't place those children. We have to, because we're not an adoption agency. When girls come in that want to uh, release for adoption, then we refer them to Jim Thompson. Now, we'll walk with them through that process. We'll go meet with the adoption um, lawyers. We will go and... Um, help them interview a family. Um, but what we do do um, is we have books that some people drop by to us um, that has pictures of their family and tells a little bit about them. And especially when we have a girl that really doesn't know what she's going to do, we'll let her see that book. And just to see, well, yes, this family um, really does care about my child. And then all we, we will call the Thompsons and say um, she really liked this family so and then we turn it over to them because we can't by law I mean I'm sure we could slip around and do it but we're not gonna do that either and, you know it's just it's just not worth it then we lose we lose our credibility we lose our integrity so. y'all have any other questions if you would be interested in going to the banquet, let me know. I'd love to see you at a table. Um, if, if you, as an organization, would like to buy a table, they're three hundred and fifty dollars, and that seats ten people. And you're welcome to do that. We'll put your name in the program. Um, but if that, if you don't, that's fine too. But if you'd like to come, I'd love for you to come. Um, I also sit on the board of First Steps. Um, Governor Haley just placed me on that and that's probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do because um, she wants to, to connect private sector and, um, and secular and um, there's a lot of liberal people in government. Um, oh. And sometimes, so South Carolina. How could that be? Sometimes, you know, I'm we're meeting with people from, you know, <coughs> Department of Social Services, from DHEC, from all these different agencies, and sometimes they look at me like I've got two heads um, when I say, "Why would we spend money to do that? Why would why would we spend state money to do that when we have private sector that can do it? Why why would we do that?" And um, the chairman called me a couple of weeks ago. He said, Lexi, you really, 
you really stirring some stuff up in your six months on this committee. And I said, then you shouldn't put me on it then. That's all I can say. Good for you. Um, um, same thing happened. I was on the juvenile parole board for five years, and the same thing happened there. So um, I'm afraid I'm getting a little bit of a reputation for me. Um, welcome but, to the club. <laughs> welcome to the world. Um, but anyway, we... Um, We've been working on a bill, the 20-week Pain Capable Infant Protection Act, and what 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 our goal is is to um, establish personhood for that child, and we're having to chip away at it. There are those that think that we just need to say outlaw abortion, and you can't do it. We don't have the votes to do it. It would be challenged in the courts. We can't do that, but we can chip away at it, and that's what this bill does. Um, it says that, medically speaking, that children at 20 weeks gestation do feel pain. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we need to um, stop abortions at that, at that point. Um, and that, then that makes that baby is established as a person that way. And we'll just keep chipping away. We, um, it went through the subcommittee and, and came out of subcommittee in the House, went to the full judiciary in the House, um, came out, it came out of that committee, but it was quite, quite the debate in the Judiciary Committee. It went to the full House, and Representative Wendy Nanny from Greenville was the chief sponsor of that bill, and I mean, y'all, for one hour, they pounded her. I mean, pounded her relentlessly. It was, we were shocked at how hard they went after her. But we won that vote 80 to 27. So now it's in the Senate. Um, it has just been referred to the Medical Affairs Subcommittee. I just found that out today. Um, Senator Peeler will appoint that committee, but it looks like that Senator Hutto is going to be on that committee, which is not good for us. Uh, he will put a minority report on it just like that. Um, but that hearing is next Wednesday at 9 o'clock in Columbia. So we're um, working now on the people that will come and testify. Um, in favor of the bill, and we have some scientists and neonatologists, um, OBGYNs, pediatricians. We also have a lady coming who, um, actually she's from Spartanburg, and uh, when she was 20 weeks pregnant, they told her that, she and her husband, that her <coughs> daughter uh, would be born with only one leg, and that the best thing they could do for her was to abort her. They did an ultrasound. When the needle went in, I mean, um, an amnio, when the needle went in, um, Savannah pulled back from the needle and then she reached up and grabbed it. Mm -hmm. um, and all that's on, um, they have an ultrasound movie of that. Um, so we're going to take that in and enter it in. Savannah, yes, was born without one of her legs, but she's also one of the swimmers for the Dorman swim team. So she's living a very full, life and yet <coughs> that's what her parents were told you just need to get rid of her and just try again um, and Savannah is just she's the cutest little eighth grade student you've ever seen and very active she could probably outwalk any of us even with her um, crutches she's just so quick um, anyway it'll go through medical affairs subcommittee hopefully we will get it out of committee we think that we have the votes to do that, and then it'll go to full judiciary in the Senate. And um, Senator Hutto will put um, a minority report on it, which will make it have to be set for special order. And then that's where getting it up for special order. We have the votes to pass it if we can just get it on the floor. So we're going to really have to put the pressure on the senators to get. We started earlier than we did last year. Um, and because they run in two-year cycles, we had to start all over this year. But we, we know if we can just get it on the floor. So we started much earlier, and hopefully we'll get set for special order. Um, but that's, that's just one of the, that's the main bill that we're working on today. Interestingly, um, I had lunch today with um, a girl that's a student at USC, and um, she's kind of gone the liberal pathway since she's gone to school there. And um, I said, so what are you doing for community? What are you doing to have fellowship? She said, oh, I'm a part 
of a feminist organization. I said, really? I said, and, and what have y'all kind of laid out for your goals this year? She said, our number one goal is to defeat the pain capable bill. And I said, okay, one of my goals this year is to win that thing. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there is, there. I mean, we're definitely, Planned Parenthood is definitely against us. There are other groups that, um, that are against us. And, but, we're just going to keep pushing on and trying to do the right thing. And um, would love your support with that if you want to call our senators here in Spartanburg County. And I think we'll be fine um, with our senators here. Of course, Senator Bright. Um, and even Senator Reese will vote with us on this, we feel like. He, he always has voted for life with us. <laughs> so, any questions about that? We are a nonprofit, but 10% of our time can be spent to political action, and so that's why I'm working on this bill. It directly affects us, and um, I'm real meticulous about the time that I spend on things like that because the IRS would just love to come and get a nonprofit conservative group. What am I thinking? Singling us out. <laughs> Why would you think that? I know. <laughs> it's been a long time. I've known here a long time. Thank you so much. If you guys have not been to the banquet, it is worthwhile. I've been going for the last several years with our church group on it. So uh, I believe you said three people, whatever, so it's like $35 a piece. If 10 people want to get together, you can do it that way. There's a number of different ways of doing it or through your churches and all on it. It's definitely worthwhile as I've been to it. Do you have an email list or a website or something? We do. We have a website. It's carolinapregnancy.org. And... Um, and they order tickets to the banquet through that you website? Can, you can reserve um, tickets that way. And we don't really have tickets, but you can let us know that you'd like to be seated at a table. We'll see you. I encourage everyone to do that. With all my print shop. <laughs> <laughs> there's no charge to come. I mean, if you just come as an individual or a couple, there's no charge. We will place you at a table. Um, it may be in the bag, but... Give them money. <laughs> the food is great, Thank too. <laughs> Where's it go? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, at the Spartanburg Expo Center, the old walk along. We outgrew the auditorium. And I'll be putting the information on our website from time to time so that, but, you know, Carolina Pregnancy Center, just go there, give them an email. Um, definitely go to this banquet. You know me, I'm not a very social person, but I do go to this banquet. So, all right. Uh, we have a short meeting tonight because, of course, Roger's not here. Is there any other issues? Oh, you have an issue. And then you should probably talk about your issue. And so why don't you go first? That's not an issue. Well, you know what I mean. An agenda <laughs> item. A, a, a short <laughs> agenda <laughs> item. Mine's a plug. Something said. I won't take off my clothes, but I will model the logo. Spartanburg Tea Party it does have a logo. It's on the website. And a friend of mine has one of those fancy embroidery machines. And she took a few hours and programmed the logo into it. So if you have a garment that you'd like this applied to, a ten dollar bill, we'll bring it to the meeting and I will give it to my friend and we'll fix you up. Okay. Oh, cool. <coughs> and Tommy, do you want to talk about the show? Go ahead. All right. Um, and some of you don't know me, uh, since we got all these new people here, which is great. Uh, really thankful everybody who come in and see us. Uh, I've uh, got a Spreaker. It's a podcast. It's on Spreaker.com. If anybody wants any business cards or any way to get directly to that, just let me know. Uh, we're running through our first season right now. Um, we're just going to get to 10 episodes, kind of reevaluate where everything is. But we're wanting to really get new people involved who are not involved right now and show them how to tactfully do it how to talk to people, how to talk to senators, how to be you know, res respectful and change minds because just making a point isn't what we're trying to do. We're trying to make a difference. So that's the main thing that we're wanting to, to bring across. We're sharing history hours, history stories like you've never seen before. We've got sound effects in the background just to keep people engaged uh, to know where we came from. But uh, anyways, if y'all would please log on, listen. We're wanting to monetize it and 
uh, make it where I can have more time to get involved on this, just check us out. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and the Spreaker app, Spreaker.com. Like Speaker, but with an R. But we appreciate it. And this is every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Thank you. And I usually do try to put reminders out on our Facebook page or our email list, but, you know, just put it in the back of your mind. Thursday night, 9 p.m., I better be listening to the Dimsdale debate. And you can call in, too, if anybody. You can call I know, in. I know people have opinions. So, <laughs> yeah, just, what's it? Well, you're doing interviews of people who maybe have grown up in this area or mill villages or um, I would like to, heck, we could have a Mill Village uh, history hour. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, we're, we're usually, we'll, we'll, have, um, we'll have Roger Nutt on. We haven't had Justin Bradley yet, so we've got to get on that. Um, Karen was on the first one. And actually, she was... Have you mentioned my name every week since yeah. then? I, probably. It's not really the thing I've got to focus on. It's just kinda, it just kind of happens. <laughs> but uh, we, we actually had someone who is organizing a precinct now on the pilot episode. He's 18 years old, and he's getting involved with precinct your organization because he listened to... Karen Martin on the Dems Dog, but she's really proud about that. So, so yeah. thanks, y'all. Thank you. Any other announcements or questions or anything before we adjourn? Um, precinct. 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 You know, I haven't precinct. even mentioned that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk about that earlier. This is Bill Conley, and he's the first vice chair of our Spartanburg County Republican Party. And if you have any burning questions about precinct organization that I have not talked about, Bill is the grand poobah of precinct reorganization, and he, and he will help us. Thank you for coming. If you are not on my email list, come give me your email. I'll sign you up. We meet here every second Tuesday of the month. Get here a little bit early if you want to eat. Our meetings start at 7, and thank you.